Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. I'm your host Phoenix and today I got Jolene with me again. My, my little Hello. guy. <laughs> little guy. Yeah. My, How dare you. My, my, little, my little, little cinnamon roll little guy. <laughs> Not that. <I'm, laughs> respect your old- <laughs> you respect, respect your elders. Your elders? <laughs> Bro, you're like- Yeah. Wait a minute, you're only like, what, two months older than me? <laughs> okay, and I am older. Yeah. You're like, my back is getting out! Honestly I... though, for real, my back hurts, my hands hurt. <laughs> I literally, if it were up to me, I'd be asleep at eight. <laughs> you sound like my parents. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dude, they honestly, they do go to bed at, like, I'll, I'll, like, go see them, and then they're, like, in bed at eight. <laughs> like, ready, like, in and watching their little shows, ready to pass out at any moment. That's so cute. But the wheel was spun, and Jolene sc screamed. I think, yeah, you screamed when we got it as a landed on the wheel and whatnot. I was so scared of what we what we'd land on. I was really hoping for the best. Yeah, and that and that and the best is Law X Reader. If you didn't know, <laughs> it is the best thing around, and no one's ever gonna get us down. <laughs> We've read a lot of good stuff, so I'm I'm excited for things that we got. Yeah, me too. I hope- yeah, What are our predictions for the wheel today? Because I'm hoping for one thing. Oh, um, Mihawk X Shanks. Yeah. <laughs> you keep bringing up Mihawk X Shanks. I feel like you have already read it without me. No, I don't- I don't... Like, you just got too curious. I, I feel like you would. Dude, you know what I'm you're, you're obsessed with them. No, I keep bringing it up because we were so scarred. Yeah, yeah. I'm not scarred. I was just so surprised. What I I because th we were so traumatized by that one of like the the detail and all I'd that like, shit. I think it'd work. be funny if we get it again. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I have been reading SMG three four fan fictions and whatnot, and then I started. I actively went on Ao three to find more. <laughs> I have a problem. <laughs> um, is it worth it? Fuck yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> Hey, you should be proud of me, Jolene. I'm using AO3 like you would always wanted, alright? I did, but... I want cost. I want cost, yeah. <laughs> Alright, let me find a coin in this jar that I have. Perfect. I have a nice shiny quarter. Alright, do you want to be heads or tails? Tails. Oh. Yep, it's tails. Alright, did we... What's oh. her name again? Oh, wait, uh, I need to change this, because this says our name is Louie. <laughs> our name is Lot Louie. Uh... Oh, oh, wait, we don't have to worry about this for a long time. Alright, we, we're fine, just... <laughs> Alright. We need to your heart's content. Uh, oh my god. Would it be... <sighs> I'm so upset. What? It's not bad. It's inconvenient. Yeah. Um... What's inconvenient? My phone just shut off. Oh, I not like, like, um, like it closed out the app. Oh, I thought you were like my phone just died <laughs> actively. That'd be so funny considering I'm on call on my phone. Oh, I always thought you were on call on on your computer and then you would read it on your phone. Really? That's what I always thought. Nope, it's all on my phone because then I have to. Sometimes the laptop is a little funny, so it'll like shake the entire screen and I can't really compute anything right, which is why I wasn't able to get on the document too much. Gotcha, okay. Or like look at it. But um, anyway. Hold up. Am I at the right spot? Chapter 4, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Chapter 4. Chapter 4, where to start. Yeah. Okay, my brain is- ugh. My Very dumbass sorry. thought you were, like, asking me, like, where do you start? I'm like, oh, at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> you, know you know what? <laughs> I'm a comedian. On the deck, <laughs> feeling the cooling breeze against his face. The weather today was decent for once, so he took this rare opportunity to think. Excuse me, sir, I'm trying to read. <laughs> this is I don't know cat. if you hear that. My, my cat's just meowing <laughs> incessantly. <laughs> 
He wants freedom. I've already fed him. He wants water. He everything is all nice and tidy, but um, he does want freedom. So he took this bath. These past few weeks have been way too eventful to, to give him to give him a moment like this. Despite being dead tired, he had to take advantage of this peaceful moment. The world isn't usually this kind. You might as well appreciate it. Let's see. Straw Hat barely survived his recovery and is now doing just fine, judging by the latest news of him returning to Marine Board. Guy's a menace, he thought. But Law had to give him props for pulling off a stunt like that. What a moron. I go through all the trouble to fix him and then he goes right back there. He took his hat off to scratch his head, thinking of those last agonizing moments with Lucy. He had suffered such severe trauma seeing his own brother die in his arms during that war. Where it couldn't describe the painfully hollow look he bore on his face. Mm-hmm. Looking at that photo. Sorry. <laughs> I'll beat you out of your gun. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Terrible. Oh my gosh. That would kill me. Damn. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is like that time photo. that you're making the Porcus DA slide, and I just put a picture of a you, donut. Uh, you fucker. <laughs> You fucker! How dare you? Worth it. <laughs> Looking at the photo in the newspaper, he couldn't decide whether Straw Hat was strong or just a plain idiot. Maybe both. Law caught himself stuck gazing at the hat in his hand. One thing was certain, he was no stranger to trauma or loss. He helped him because he would hate to lose such a rival, but also because he understands. It's what he would have done too. Corazon. What Straw Hat did actually could prove useful, maybe. maybe. That the world would. Eh, the world will be focused on those recent chain of events. The world's eyes are distracted by this new era unfolding. Yeah. Now that attention was off him for a while, this could be an opportune window. What shall he do with it? The Navy had been torn apart from war, and has got to be in a vulnerable state. Most likely, they're boiling with ang- anger from this horrible mess. Their best players have been bested as well. Subtle grin formed on Law's face, and he rested against the railing as the gears in his head turned. Maybe the Navy could use a new game piece. He smiled, looking into the ocean waves. This chaos? The chaos? This chaos? Ah. This chaos the world is in could be his ticket to get what he wanted. How pissed would you be, Duke Flamingo? Meanwhile, the girl known as Ash was not having a peaceful was not having a peaceful of a time. Currently, she was throwing up her breakfast and not yet able to keep anything down. It was so humiliating. Ash, you doing okay? A crew member knocks on the restroom door, then winced as the dreadful sounds coming back. Ah. At the dreadful sound coming from behind that door. What do you think? Ash snapped. She collapsed to the floor from exhaustion. What was your name again? Penguin. Love him. Stan. Um, <laughs> the man that the cap answered hesitantly. Not sure what to make of this situation. You, uh, need anything? You perhaps got a new stomach? Even better, a new body I could have, Penguin? She groaned. Her body felt like complete trash. Like she had been hit by a bus. Over and over. It was irritating how difficult it was even to go into the bathroom with an IV still hooked up to her along with having no energy to walk. The man noticed Penguin outside the door. Had to assist her with that. Uh, no. He answered confused. You'd probably have some water. You're still dehydrated. No shit. She angrily thought. I know. After having his- after- uh, After answering his suggestion- she mustered as much strength as she could to stand back I and mean, sadly failed. Her legs shook from the strain, making her fall back onto the floor. She growled in frustration at her helplessness. Ash, you okay? Penguin urgently asked, startled by the crash. He lunged for the doorknob, but the girl stopped him in his tracks. Don't, she shouted. I just tripped, I'm fine. Using the nearby sink as a crutch, the girl finally managed to get up on her feet, legs wobbling and shaking. She opened the door to see Penguin looking blue in the face. You sure don't look fine. 
He did his best to stay composed, but it was difficult to sight of this zombie with silver hair. She hung onto her ivy pole, her eyes lifeless and gray, with her arm in a cast still, and bandages accessorizing her body. It was undeniably a sad sight. Ash ignored his remarks, and slowly paced back towards the bed. Isn't she stubborn, he thought. He sighed, deciding to just walk beside her in case he fell again. Getting a good look at the woman, he could see her shoulder blades sticking out from her back. Jeez, she ah, can't be more than 95, 95 pounds. <laughs> Fuck you, you stupid... <laughs> I'm sorry, Damn. my cat like stepped on me and I'm just like, why? I thoroughly thought you, I th I like, you were making cool. fun of Penguin and I was like, Damn, you just said he was a stand and you're about to throw hands with him, oh my god. Oh my god, why would you step on me? <laughs> it's like tickle <laughs> in the worst way. Where, 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 where are you? I'm, I'm literally. He's killing me. I love him though. I love him so much. You can't get mad at him. He's just a baby. I know. He's so cute. Anyway. As the weak young lady returned to her bed, Penguin glanced down at the floor and noticed a sketchbook that had fallen onto the ground. This yours? Yes, picking it up. Yeah, thanks. Ash said, gratefully taking it back and opening it to the page she previously was on before she got sick. On the page was a rough sketch of a familiar man with a smug grin. Oh, it's Captain Law, he excitedly said. That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. The girl might be embarrassed about the state she was in, but she couldn't deny the appreciation of the compliment and managed a small smile. Your captain sure is an interesting man. I have you. <laughs> oh my God. I had him. I had him in my grasp for a moment. Like cutie patootie. <laughs> he wants to feel included too in the reading. Huh. That's an understatement. Penguin scratched his head and chuckled at her com uh, at her comment. Ash then saw an opportunity. He seemed like an open enough book. Can you tell me a bit about him? She threw a warm smile at Penguin, hoping it would do the trick. <laughs> it seemed to, as he seemed to be getting excited by a woman smiling at him and started blushing. Well, he certainly is a man you could look up to, that's for sure. I'm proud to call on my captain. He kept up his rambling from being so bashful. Lost the guy that helped shape me into the man I am today. All the men on this ship could probably say the same thing. He sure seems like a sour man, though. Is he really that nice? Well, the guy scratched his face slightly. As cold as he comes, up, comes across, he does have a big heart. Penguin wore a sincere smile on his face, thinking about his comment. I see, Ash said, gazing at her drawing of the man in question. I guess he must, since he so graciously rescued me. Yep, he's a great doctor too, you know. He fixed you a ball by himself. That's pretty impressive, she had to admit, but inside she was cringing at the thought that that guy was picking at her body and broken bones. How creepy. What else do you know? Oh, uh, well, the sentence was cut off by the sudden sound of a door swinging open. Penguin stood at attention. Captain Lothar! At the sound of his name, Ash quickly shut her book and looked over to the door. Head to the meeting room. I'll join everyone in ten minutes or so. We've got matters to discuss. The captain leisurely walked closer, speaking in his low and serious tone. Yes, sir. In this instant, Penguin then ran out of the room. Once again, she was left in the room alone with the dark doctor. What brings you here? She asked, looking down at her sketchbook. Same procedure. I will just check you over every 12 hours. His pitch black hair looked messier than normal, and his voice was as dry as bone. He placed his stethoscope in his ears and approached the patient. Patient. Her heart jumped at the feeling of him placing the other end on her chest. Breathe in. She did so, but her breath skipped a little. Out. She exhaled. Her chest tense. Her chest- Yeah, yeah. I, I know how to read. <laughs> I don't know what the heck. I'm dying. Good. His words were short and hollow. That deep tone of his still made Ash's skin tingle. <laughs> Mine too. It's a my bad. <laughs> sorry, I'll be I'll be down bad somewhere else. I'm sorry. <laughs> you killing me. As the 
As the stethoscope wandered around, chest and back, she was too hesitant to speak. Finally, the silence became too suffocating. You have dark circles under your eyes, she said. And, he questioned, recording the results on her chart. Have you been getting any sleep? Or have you not been getting any sleep? You look exhausted. She asked more with, with curiosity than concern. That doesn't matter. Get the subject short. Wrapping the blood pressure cuff around her arm again. His lack of response started to irritate her. Not very talkative, I see. Just trying to make conversation. Locke continued with his routine without a response. The silver, uh, the silver haired patient were tried to go along with the silence, but for some reason, couldn't help speaking to the doctor again. So, Penguin says you cured me all by yourself. You must be quite the medical prodigy. You said it yourself, I was practically dead. She fidgeted with her hand. She got nothing but the echoing noise of paper as the response as Locke looked through her chart, placing his glasses on his face. He wanted to complete his routine check as soon as possible because there were more important matters he needed to discuss with his crew. He devised a plan just a few moments ago and was anxious to put it into action. He didn't want to waste time chatting with this woman. Damn. <laughs> You're tearing me apart, Lisa. <laughs> I just what is that from? Oh, it's from the room. I don't know what that is, but... <gasps> you don't know what the room is? Dude, I don't know what anything is. It's Ask me about any media, there's a problem- there's a probably- Like, I've never seen a single episode of SVU. Oh, we're about to change that. Absolutely not. Oh, okay. I don't have the patience. Like, I could watch tiny clips. Cause I keep getting, like, short clips of suit on TikTok, and mm -hmm. I almost want to watch that. But, no. no. Ash sighed in defeat. <laughs> Relaxing back in bed and opening back up with her sketchbook. Trying to talk to this rude guy was apparently a waste of effort. She grabbed her pencil and continued drawing. The figure was right in front of her anyway. Might as well take this opportunity to draw some more details. Nothing but the scratching of pencils could be heard for the next couple of minutes as Ash roughly sketched his tattoo on his forearm and Law jotted down his data. How have you been doing? Eating? Drinking? His sudden questions made her jump. Uh, not well. Sorry. I, but I wasn't able to keep down my breakfast this morning. She looked away, a faint flush of embarrassment on her cheek. Your, bo your body still needs to gain more strength to keep uh, down food. You're probably not used to eating that much yet. No worries. Try eating slower and in smaller portions and continue to drink plenty of water. Throwing up just to hydrate you, okay? His voice was smooth and professional. Alright. She looked up at him. Still not making eye contact with, uh, still not making eye contact with the girl. By the way, how do you want me to address you, Doctor Captain? Doctor Captain? She humorously asked with a smile. You could just call me Law. He plainly answers to Ash Ash's disappointment. Not even humor to crack the sky. You're about as dry as the desert. You know that? She remarked with a frown. I have other mat matters I have to take care of. I can't waste any time now. He removed his glasses and gave her a firm, I can't be bothered, stare. Her heart began jumping again at the sight of his grave onyx eyes. Just with a look, felt such dominance, dominance overcome her, helping from the intensity. Oh, the dominance? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and no, trust me, I was thinking the same thing. I was gonna stutter anyway. <laughs> her head started running in panic circles at the sensation, at the sensation she was experiencing. Did I just a bit over this man? Yes. In disbelief. <laughs> Valid. Now then, I'll pivoted to face his patient that was suddenly growing hot in the face. Noticing the flushed cheek, he walked closer and leaned, le walked over and leaned in closer to Ash. This only made her face grow even more red as the distance between them started, started to close. Her breath dropped at the touch of his hand against her forehead. Hmm, your fever, your fever seems to be coming back. She would feel his breath tickle against her face as he spoke. His eyes were like this black hole sucking her in, taking away all her ox- <laughs> What are you thinking? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm having a Delulu moment right now. Hold on. <laughs> ah, I see you. This is... Taking away all- 
This is not helping no. me. <laughs> I'm picturing it. I'm like, oh, you, you can, <laughs> you can bring me. <laughs> <No. that."> <laughs> ah. His eyes were like black holes, sucking her in, taking away all her oxygen as they continued to examine. Her. God, she was screaming inside her head. Is he a demon? Doing this on purpose? Tension finally subsided as he stood back, giving her space to breathe again. He reached over and grabbed a cloth from the sink and ran cold water over it. Ash could only watch him in awe, astonished at what this man had just did to her. Put this over your face. I'll help. He handed her the damn cloth and she followed his order without uttering a word. She did so. His gaze fell down to her sketchbook that she had in her lap. His eyebrows hid under his fringe, rose in surprise at the drawing. She drew me? She drew all that from memory? He thought to himself. He had to get going now. I'll come back after dinner. Bevel will come down after a while to check on you. He perched his weapon back on his shoulder and began to take his leave. Relax for the time being while your fever dies down. Don't go anywhere. You're in no shape yet. A second later, the door latched shut once again, and Ash collapsed back into her pillow and stared up at the ceiling net. Alone. What the hell was that? She whispered to herself. Her hands covered her face as she groaned in embarrassment over the absurd moment that just happened a moment ago. What the hell happened to me? Her pale hands took the cloth that rested over her face. The image of those damn eyes wouldn't disappear. Oh, of those eyes wouldn't disappear. Damn, that stare of his. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting up once again to study her drawing. That dumb, smug look on his face. His rude personality. She thought like she was going over a checklist. After a few seconds of drowning in her thoughts, she flipped the page. Her pencil began to glide across the paper once again. His eyes. Oh, his his eyes. <laughs> Law swiftly walked down the corridor to the drawing room. Walking so fast in the flight breeze with through the loose strands of hair, he was in deep concentration when suddenly Ash's portrait of him flashed in his mind. So it isn't so it isn't a farce that she really is an artist. She, uh, he confirmed. She obviously has some skills. That was pretty good. He then turned his head and got a quick look at the reflection in a nearby window. Hmm, I do have Dr. Circle. Eh, Dr. Circle. I, I was about to say Dr. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Circle. I can, I can look into this man's dreamy eyes all day, bro. <laughs> full eye contact all day? I think I would fold immediately. <laughs> I would fold so fast under prolonged guy contact, you know? Prolonged guy contact. <laughs> prolonged guy contact. Oh, fuck, it's my turn. I have, I have to read. All right, I can do this. Chapter five, fresh air. I gotta be professional. This is a nice poem that this person wrote. I gotta treat it with respect. Damn, what? I want a poem. You don't get a poem. <laughs> <laughs> Should I start sending you poems every day now? <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm, I just send you roses are red, violets are blue, and that's all I send. <laughs> I'm like, don't you love it? It's my nice poem. <laughs> my my ghost drifts the mist, white as sin forgiven. My song reaches high as heaven, of what I regain from living. Full moon. I can't say the word full moon after that hell of a boss episode, man. That's fucking crazy shit. Oh, <laughs> crying ah. myself to sleep. <laughs> full moon. Afternoon. Stars are stern in full bloom. Happily ever after thoughts of what I've long forgot. Now I have to scroll. Okay, there we go. Granite eyes gloss the page, rather, in rather invested in its words. Night had fallen once again, and Law laid back in his bed, deep in an old and tattered book containing random thoughts and poetry. Oh, he just has her j <laughs> He's reading her diary right now! <laughs> That's not rude. Yeah. He's in a privacy. Yeah, I know we're weak Damn, and we man. really can't do anything, but th what the I know fuck? We're suspicious, but fuck. <laughs> the book was bound by black leather and twine, desperately hanging on to, a to the weathered pages. It felt like a delicate artifact prompted in his hands. Once morning came, Law's intricate plan would be put into action. 
The heart pirates would set sail to the island of uh, Hachin... Hachinosu? Yeah, sure. More pop, more properly known as the Pirate Island. It was a dangerous place, crawling with pirates of all kinds, and he couldn't afford to loot, to afford any loose ends. At the moment, he only had one, and that was Ash. One would say he would drop her off at the next habitable island, so he wouldn't have to worry about it. But what if she could be useful? Not to mention the man's in increasingly curiosity of the girl. Two hours have gone by since he started digging through her journals. To his surprise, she seemed to be quite knowledgeable about a variety of topics. Extensive drawings and notes of different plants, animals, and insects uh, half haphazardly. haphazardly filled the pages. It felt like he was reading an encyclopedia of the Earth's flora and fauna. He found out the toxins sh she had come from a type of jellyfish that... Uh, Secret. secretes, secretes, and from its tentacles. It had directions and everything. It had to harvest it, along with how to coat weapons with the substance. Damn, we're fucking, we're we're like, what is it, like, like a switchblade almost? We got, we we got all sorts of tools on us. Yeah, we're so cool. Yeah, we're so cool and different. We're not like other girls. So cool. <laughs> so I... <laughs> but, between the woman's research and artwork, she certainly seemed to be a wandering artist, as she claimed, with all this extensive knowledge and cleverness. Someone like Ash would be useful for the crew. Before he went further into his thoughts, he had to eliminate the possibility of her having dark ties. Oh, that's the name of the book! With anyone like the Navy <laughs> <laughs> or other of rivaling pirates. All he had found thus far was an old and worn book of poetry. Nothing stuck out as suspicious. But before he knew it, minutes and hours had ticked by. So I got really distracted. One of the books I got recommended was a, a Niji X reader. <laughs> Niji? Yeah, like, the, the blue one from the, uh, the blue one. I got yeah, the blue uh, one. From, I don't yeah. want the blue one. Yeah, it, the only thing I can read is it's all about political marriage. <laughs> That's awesome. You know what? Send it to me. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> continue. Realizing this, he finally shut the book and placed it on his bedside table, sighing with exhaustion. He wished he could live without needing such an annoying things as sleep. It was just a waste of time in his opinion. Hours could be spent accomplishing things, but instead he just had to lay unconscious, suffering nightmare after nightmare. He swung his arms over his eyes, a familiar image of gemstone eyes staring back at him. You're as dry as the desert, you know that? They spoke. He scoffed, hearing the comment in his head again. She even speaks in poetic sentences. He chuckled, drifting off to sleep. Weird girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this- He just called this weird and the first thing I read is that we can't breathe. <laughs> That's great. Wait, we're, we're, <laughs> we're dying. Yeah, we're dead. Can't breathe. Ash paddled for her life, reaching the surface above the waves. Her chest felt like it was going to explode from not being able to breathe. Please, please, I don't want to die. Of, uh... Vin Vinette? A vagnet of black stared creepily over her eyes. Oh no, please. Her hand swam and swam desperately to escape the water, but she didn't manage to move. It grew cold. Mom, help me. Ash gasped awake in a cold sweat. She caught her breath and slowly sat up on the bedside, clutching her face to high tears. Stupid, so stupid, she mumbled, wiping her eyes. Her eyes did a quick scan of the bleak room. It felt unsettling in there at night, only the glow of the small lights and the medical equipment shining through the dark. They felt like the beady eyes of the scary creatures that glared back at her. I gotta get some air. This place is depressing, she huffed, carefully standing on her feet. A frail hand clung on yeah, clung onto the IV pole, and Ash proceeded to shuffle towards the door. Some exercise wouldn't hurt anyway. She couldn't stand being crippled. Upon opening the metal door, she was presented with a familiar, ominous, uh, yeah, ominous atmosphere. Metal pipes lined the metal walls, becoming faint, uh, making faint hissing noises. Jeez, would it hurt to liven up the place a little? She talked to herself. I feel like I'm crawling out of a morgue. 
Would it kill that guy to decorate <laughs> a little? Honestly, it's just like there's not even like a painting hung up or anything. You know what? This, the the no wait, hold up. Is it? Yeah, the study the study is like so it's so homey. It feels so lived in. Yeah, this this the marine. Nah. Yeah, this gives Probably a... with those guys. I give it a three out of ten. <laughs> yeah, on HGTV. Yeah, <laughs> what MTV? Welcome to my crib. This is where I sleep and just show the medical room. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> At least there was light to help guide her to where the door to the outside was. A cooling breeze greeted her as she swung the door open. She took a pleasant deep breath to take in fresh air, smelling the scent of the sea once again. I smiled softly with relief as she looked up at the, at the dark blue sky in awe. The moon is so pretty tonight. She looked around for a chair, but the decor on the deck was as lacking as the inside. Figures. Ash weakly managed to see herself down on the deck and leaned back against the barrier rails. It wasn't very comfortable, but it was a million times better than that damn hospital bed. Her ears enjoying the noise of the waves in the still of the night. Her smile did not leave her face as she thought of how lucky she was to see the night sky again after her brush with death. I suppose I should thank the man. He probably... He might not be a ray of sunshine, but he is kind. She closed her eyelids, picturing the doctor's dark stare. Those eyes are so tired. Does he ever sleep? She wondered. What keeps you up at night, Captain Law? Is it normal? To t is it a normal thing to talk to yourself? Ash's heart leaps out of her chest. It's started by a scruff voice. Oh my god, are we gonna- are we gonna get into fluff now? Why? <laughs> are we what? Huh? I'm fluff. Huh? <laughs> uh, Christ, she explained. Oh yeah, she explained from fright and noticed the man in question standing- standing above, looking down at her. Is it a normal thing to scare the shit out of people? She retorted, feeling anger from him catching her off guard. La let out a little laugh at her backhanded compliment. Oh, comment. <laughs> it's not a compliment just yet. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, it is, he said, flashing a smug smile. It was adorable seeing her so flustered. Now tell me, now tell me why you're out here. I could ask you the same thing. It's my ship. He rolled, she rolled her eyes at his sarcastic answer. You realize I'm about, it's about three in the morning, right? Are you an insomniac or something? Maybe. He shrugged with an annoyed smirk still there. The woman sighed in defeat. I just need some fresh air. It was suffocating in there. Ah, I see. Law casually took a seat next to the young woman. There were a couple of seconds of silence as the two stared up at this guy. Thank you for saving me. Law glanced over to Ash and in the in the curiosity of her sudden change of heart, she continued to look up at the space. Oh, into space. Do they know what space is in One Piece? Space? Yeah, like space. Like, like, out, like out. And like into like. I'm like, pretty sure they do. Do they? I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. You know. Yeah, it's yeah. No, fuck it. Yeah, they know about space. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to enjoy the night right now. Her head then rolled over against the wall to look. To look the doctor in the eyes with sincerity. Thank you. She smiled at him for the first time. You're welcome, he nodded, taken aback by the sight of her eyes, sparkling beautifully in the night in the moonlight. His chest unexpectedly felt strange. I wanna I wanna see what this comment says. There's one comment. It's not called strange, it's called love. I was I thought that was gonna be like, actually, he was having a heart attack right then and there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be um I'll be on my way soon as we reach the next island, I promise. Law well, stepped out of his trance upon hearing this. Actually, I was going to propose an offer. He mentioned his his lower tone returning. Ash lifted an eyebrow. Oh, what would that be? The captain softly smiled smiled with composure. I was wondering if you would like to join my crew. Ash's eyes widened in shock. Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me? 
<laughs> I'd like for you to join my crew, he repeated, his facial expression still the same. Why? <laughs> Was he being serious right now? I think you'd be a great addition to the Heart Pirates. We can use another fellow scientist. I'm not a scientist, though. What on earth do you mean? She seriously didn't know what this man was talking about. Sure you do, he grinned, his attention returning to the sight of the moon. Your notes on the world's creatures were uh, spectacular, and you are familiar with creating elixirs and medicines as well. Such knowledge could be useful. Ash cringed, hiding her face behind her silver hair. You looked through my things? I sure did. I wasn't going to let a potential wait, enemy wait. aboard. What? Did she sign her, her journal? Like, how does he know that's her journal instead of anyone else's journal? That's a good point. <laughs> like, Maybe she, she that does been Her father's lost journal. Oh, wait, her mom. Her mom. <gasps> she's calling out for her mom. Oh, wait, that would've been so sad! Her mom was a scientist who got lost at sea! Oh, what the f- <laughs> I'm sad. Like, oh, sad. <laughs> I'm sad. <laughs> this is a depressing episode now. <laughs> this is no I'm longer so about sorry. being, like, I'm down so bad sorry. for law. We're just sad. <laughs> Even the cat's sad. Yeah. <laughs> I hear him! <laughs> sure oh, I did. I wasn't going to let a potential enemy aboard my ship, he answered matter-of-factly. So, what do you say? Pass, she instantly answered. What? Why? He was shocked by her refusal. Did, he even, did she even consider it? I'm not looking to be a pirate. I have other plans for myself. Sorry. She shrugged nonchalantly. I prefer to look, work alone, but thank you for the offer. Moss scratched his head in disbelief. Well, that sure is a shame. Also, I would never join a, a crew whose captain doesn't even share his goals. She smirked with pale lips. Ugh. The young doctor placed his fur hat back on his head and pondered. Well, if you must know, my goals are quite complicated. Of course they are, <laughs> as snorted. I take you for a complicated individual. Makes sense. Oh, and what gives you that, gives you that impression? Lost smirked back in curiosity. Well, for starters, only people with complicated minds don't get any sleep. So does that mean you're also a complicated person then, Astrid? The sound of this man saying her name sent a surprising chill down her spine. Quite so. Well, then it only makes sense for you to join my crew if we're so much alike. I already told you, pirate. Pass. Lost... Lost sides, standing back on his feet and stretching his arms. Well, if you ever change your mind, my offer still stands. The sun was coming up soon. And the sun's coming up soon. You need to get more rest. The doctor extended a helping hand to the ivory woman as she reluctantly took hold to help her get back on her feet. You should too, you know. Nah, I got things to do. He he walked nah, beside. I'm a own thing. Yeah, I'm a lone wolf. <laughs> He walked beside her with his hands in his pocket as the duo headed back inside the ship. What if I said I would consider your offer if you sleep? She mischievously said. Huh, you would think you would just fool me. He smiled, enjoying their witty back and forth banter. Ashford laughed at his smart remark. Ah, well, damn. The door closed behind the chatty couple as the sun's red glow in couple. Perfect. Yeah. Alright, cool. Great, we don't have to read anymore. We're already established as a couple. <laughs> <laughs> as the sun's red glow began to rise over the waves, it was officially the start of a new day. Elmoyo, not him shocked about the rejection. <laughs> oh damn, who the fuck drew this? This is a this is a masterpiece for chapter six. This is beautiful. Ooh, I can't wait to see it after my little ad. What ad did you get? <laughs> oh, it's just like a don't smoke ad and whatever. Oh, that is a photo. Text this number. Text this number to stop quitting. 
to stop quitting. <laughs> to start quitting oh. that. <laughs> oh, I, I meant, I mean, I, I mean, quit smoking. That's what I meant. Nope, we gotta stop quitting. <laughs> we gotta start smoking. That's... My baby is weighed in my arms so nicely. He's just a little guy. You can't be mad at him. I'm not. He's just in my arms and he's so sweet. Hold up, let me sit on his head. Who anyway. Who's that wonderful girl? Oh, girl. <laughs> A silver-haired woman sat up in her bed in deep concentration with the hand of poker cards. Across from her sat a fuzzy polar bear staring, eh, staring with determined button eyes. Intense silence filled the room as the bear waited for her move. Her cards smacked against the table, revealing her hand. Four queens fought. She announced, feeling quite victorious. She crossed her arms, wearing a gloating smile, waiting to hear the bear admit defeat. Beat that! A star sparkled in the bear's eye. With a slap of cards against the table, he secured his victory. Straight flush. What? There's no way! She cried in utter shock. Ash's head fell in her hands. The bear scooped up the winnings of Fishcracker. Upon seeing the girl so upset, though, his smug attitude did a 180. I'm sorry. She sighed and calmed herself. No, Bebo, you beat me fair and square. She giggled. And don't apologize, silly. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just face deadpan. POV Phoenix. <laughs> POV trying to talk <laughs> Jolene trying to talk to Phoenix. No, stop apologizing. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <sighs> Bebo, you just apologized again. Ugh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he fell to the floor, stretching his head in complete and utter confusion, making Ash burst with laughter. She slapped her knees as Peppo, as Peppo had an existential crisis on the floor. POV, me. Her eyes tears. <laughs> POV. <laughs> POV. Jolene every night. Anyway. Oh my god. I'm doing well. Um, Ash wiped her eyes <laughs> Dude, Beppo, <laughs> you're hopeless, you know that. Ugh. Animated squiggle sprung from his head in defeat. I know. Ash crushed down and pat patted his soft, fuzzy head. Cheer up. There's nothing wrong. You just gotta be more confident. Show me your game, fate. Beppo rose his head and flashed his pointy teeth at with a silly smile. Grr! There you go. Love it. Now let's play another round. It had been around a week since Ash boarded the ship of the infamous straw. Uh, I was going to say straw hat. Sure <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Of the infamous, infamous heart pirate. She now knows. Oh my god! <laughs> are, oh my are you god. dying right now? <laughs> my cat. He's so silly. Oh my gosh. I love him. <laughs> And he's like, you are not reading today. <laughs> he's like, no reading for you. You have to be illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> we swapped places today. I actually, this is the most coherent I've ever uh, been. <laughs> <sighs> My apologies. My apologies, original gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> that made me think oh, of that yes. stupid thing that you sent me about the Shadow Money Wizard game. <laughs> <laughs> the shadow was in many years. <laughs> yes! <laughs> she now knows that their ship's name is the Polar Canning Thing, Peppo. They've been keeping her company during her recovery. <laughs> their ship was a special one and can rise and fall under the sea. On occasion, Peppo would take her to the window to watch the fish swim by. Several other crew members have been rotating to pink ships to track her progress with feeling. The others have been kind as well, but Beppo's sweet and goofy personality has captured her heart. She spent her time drawing portraits with other crew members as they stood post with her. It was nice that they all seemed to enjoy her work. Ash glanced down at her hand that held her next set of cards. Strangely, her hand that had been completely broken was good as new. This morning, her cast was taken off. She moved her fingers with ease, no cuts or stitches either. You know, it's incredible that your captain fixed my hand. I thought it'd, it'd have to be removed. It was dreadfully smashed in the shipwreck. How'd he do it? Our captain is the best doctor you'll ever meet. 
Uh, no, Chopper, uh, I mean, Bubba is safe split up. <laughs> but also, our captain has a devil fruit power that helps too. Your captain is a devil fruit user? Ash looked at the bear playing cards in astonishment. He had experiences with devil fruit users, but had never seen one of the fruits themselves before. Bevo continued to smile. Mm -hmm. He had an op-op fruit, and he has incredible abilities to manipulate space. Manipulate space? A sweat drop formed on Ash's temple. That's absurd. You're telling me that guy can control space? Yep. The captain is very talented. That guy can seriously do something like that? How scary, she thought. So what you're saying is, he fixed my hand by manipulating space? In your ribs and scapula, Bebo cheerfully said, as if nothing was wrong about his statement. A harsh chill went through her whole body, seeing the sketchy man using his space power powers to fix her bones. An image of law as a dark wizard came to mind doing his evil laugh. I can only see it. <laughs> Shadow Money Wizard Gang, we love casting spells. <laughs> Yeesh. Scary. Maybe. But, I guess that's why they call him the Surgeon of Death. The bear thought, looking up at the ceiling. Ash gulped. Did you say the Surgeon of Death? Yeah, why? Have you heard of him? Are you guys from the North Blue by any chance? Yeah, suddenly feeling uncomfortable. Yeah! Well, I'm not, but Captain is. He then placed his cards face up on the table with an innocent smile. Two aces. Three jacks. A uh, memory had returned to her when she heard that name. She had been taking shelter in the mountains on an island in the North Blue. There she befriended a small tribe that let her take residence in their village while she finished her painting. The people were kind and made sure she was fed well. Uh, she was fed every night. One of those nights, however, she woke to terrify the terrifying sound of screams in the distance. She rushed out towards the village, thinking the villagers were in trouble. She gasped for breath from running so fast. When she reached the clearing, her eyes scanned for signs of people, but came up with nothing. In a panic, she continued running until she reached the shore where she was met with a gruesome sight. The villagers stood in shock, looking down at the bodies that were scattered in the sand. They were bandits, a villager told her. He took their hearts. The man looked down, completely aghast. The words he spoke were shaken with fear. What are you talking about? Ash asked in horror. Body parts were scattered, and some were missing heads. A man saved us, but he stole their heart, and then his ship disappeared into the sea. That was a surgeon of death. The woman entered the conversation with dark eyes. He's a pirate rising to fame at an alarming rate. I never thought we'd catch a glimpse of someone like him on our island. She clutched tightly to the baby she held in her arms. I don't know why he was even here. Ash? Ash! Huh? She blinked back to reality. It's your turn. Peppo held his cards, ready to continue their game. Right. Sorry. She reached for her next card, then a slam of the door abruptly stopped the game. Peppo, you need to get out here. We got trouble. The crew member entered frantically. Okay, I'm coming. Wait here, Ash. Don't go anywhere. The bear and the other member left in a rush, leaving Ash alone in the quiet... The room... I mean, the door echoing shut behind them. Ash looked down at her bandaged hand. Trouble, huh? She asked herself. Suddenly the room shook, knocking the contents on the shelves around. Glass rattled and a booming noise faintly was heard. It sounded like cannon fire. Hmm. Guess there is trouble. She flipped off her blanket and stood to her feet with a gun. I guess I'm gonna check it out. Navy ship! The heart pirates sprung into action, readying cannon and gunpowder. Several grabbed their weapons and stood post awaiting combat, while others went down to the control room of the ship in awaited direction. Peppo had taken his ah. Peppo had taken a seat in the control room as the ship's navigator. How many ships are there? Two to the east, they're approaching fast. The bear scratched his head in frustration. Oh no. This is all my fault. I wasn't paying attention. It'll be alright. Let's get everyone off the deck and start defending. Roger that. Peppa took hold of a snail and announced everyone to take cover before the sub began its descent. The pirates started to scurry aside as fast as they could. The marines caught up to them. Before they could take shelter, 
Two men in marine uniforms came down from the sky like meteors, touching down on the deck with a bang. The crew shuddered at the sudden appearance of the two ominous-looking men. They towered over the others, bearing sinister smiles. We're here for a law, one said in a serious tone as he straightened his hat. The crew responded by drawing their weapons and pointing them towards the enemies without a word. The giant pirate known as John Bart stepped forward, being the only one that rivaled their height. In your sorry dream, get off our ship, he gripped his teeth. Listen, we could do this the easy way or the hard way. The other man cracked his ginormous knuckles, ready for a fight. I'm curious, what's the hard way? A feminine voice broke through the tension. Heads pivoted towards the door of the ship. A petite woman with silver hair calmly approached the situation. Several eyes stared in shock. The hard way is I kill whoever's in my way. The enemy marine posed in a battle stance. Ba battle stance. So, what's it going to be, doll? Doll? Oh, I'm not your doll. The woman com continued to walk closer to the men despite the warning from the crew. He wasn't pleased with his pet name for her. If you're looking for law, I haven't seen him. Blakely answered with a smug smile. The crew behind her gasped in fright and from her boldness. This is his ship, isn't it? The other said, sticking out a blade and holding it at the brave woman's throat. We don't have time for game. For the last time, tells where he is. The ship slowly begins to sink slowly into the wave, and the crew shouted for the girl to take cover. She waved up her hand, however, to have them hold on for a moment. I told you gentlemen, I don't know where he is. An intense jewel jewel eyes pierced through the men like spears. I kindly ask you to leave. The ship's going under in just a minute and I don't want to and I don't want you to think with us. I guess we're doing things the hard way then. Fed up with her sarcasm, one of the men lunged for the woman's head at a powerful punch. The remaining her pirates on deck screamed in horror, but the terrible outcome they thought would happen never did. The man's arm suddenly plunged and hung uselessly by his side like a noodle. What the? At lightning speed, the silver woman jumped and jabbed the man in various locations all over his body. In five seconds, the man collapsed to the floor, helpless, with a loud thud. His eyes were wide in shock. He couldn't get his body to move. Everywhere was numb. What the hell did you do? He cried as the nimble woman moved on to the, uh, moved on to the other man. The man swung his sword at her, like she was a pesky fly. She dogged she dodged his lunges quickly and with ease. You're a talented swordsman. Very cool, she smiled, spinning around behind the man. I don't want you hurting my friends, though. A cold shock, shock shot down the man's body as the woman's fingers hit like a pistol into his neck. In mere seconds, it was lights out. The last of the crew outside stood speechless at what they'd just witnessed. Come on, hurry inside! The girl ran and pushed the last of them through the door just before it was submerged in water leaving the two marines helpless and yelling for their lives. In the end, they were sucked into the waves and left for their ship to fetch them, while the polar tang sank further into the depths. Everyone okay? Uh, uh, Ash asked the crew with, innocent, with an innocent smile. Man, I needed that exercise. What was that? A crew member with a scarf over his face asked in disbelief. How'd you manage to defeat two Navy soldiers in tech- Ten seconds flat, and you still aren't completely healed. Don't worry, it's okay, I'm fine, he said. There weren't a problem. It's called Dim Maki, by the way. You strike certain points in the body to immobilize your opponent, to put it simply. Very handy for someone like me, who's not much of a fighter. She stretched her head bashfully. Dim Maki? A lady in absent curiosity. I've never heard of such a thing. Probably not. Their conversation was interrupted suddenly by a loud rumbling that shook the whole group. What's going on? We're not in the clear just yet. The ships are still above us, a masked member informed. Ash blew up in frustration. Why the hell did she help them escape then? Why on earth are we below them? Aren't we supposed to be hightailing it out of here? In the other direction? They would just keep following us. Don't worry, it's the captain's turn now. Probably up there on the ship. Uh on the ship now. He's on the Navy ship? By himself? Is he not? He's fine, trust me. The lady crew member approached closer to Ash to reassure her. I'm a Costco, by the way. I love her. I love her. Smash. Dan. <laughs> Smash. 
Stop! <laughs> she held out a hand for a hand friendly handshake. Uh, Ash. She took her hand to shake back. Nice to meet you. Likewise. But, as I said, our captain is known around as the surgeon of death. He's no one to take lightly. He didn't receive the name for no reason. Two ships are nothing. She stood confidently with her hand on her head. Big curly hair came overflowing from her hat. Ash was stunned by what she was hearing. She looked out into the window to see behind a costume into the deep ocean. Countless pieces of debris were falling down all around them. So, is he the one causing this? She pointed out the window. Oh yeah, that would be him. A tall, dark man entered the conversation. I'm Uni, by the way. Hey. Ash waved at the man with black, puffy hair. Started to become shy from all the attention she was getting. She wasn't really used to large crowds. Suddenly, there was a whooshing noise behind them, making them all turn around. The pirate group saluted. Captain. Don't worry, the marines are taken care of. It was law, and not a scratch on his body. Did you just... teleport? Ash asked him, trying to keep her composure from all the chaos. What are you doing out here? He asked her with dark in her eyes. Bebo told me you were... you were ordered to stay put. About that. <laughs> That's such a mood. About that. She crossed her arms, looking off into space, so she didn't have to see him so mad. Two marines made it onto the deck of the ship. I just thought I'd help out. I've been wanting some exercise. That was foolish, he replied without hesitation. You've gotten gotten more hurt than when you already are. What were you thinking, being out there during an attack? Are you not thankful at all for me uh for me helping you? I just tight tightened lightly, lost disappointment for her. Before she could apologize, Uni spoke up. But Captain, she really did save us. She's actually amazing in combat. Yeah, Akaku chimed in. She took out those two men and by herself in seconds. Seconds? Law questions, still glaring at the lady, but still looked so pale and thin. How could someone like that defeat two marines? It's true, tell him, Ash. And he patted her on the shoulder, trying to support her. Ash rubbed her shoulder, though. Not used to the attention. Uh, yeah, that's right. I promise it wasn't a problem at all. I'm fine. Law stood in silence for a moment, baffled by what his crew was claiming. Ash looked up at him with his striking eyes again, and he knew that he was and he knew that was the look uh she gave when she was being sincere. How did you do it? I'll tell you, tell me how you defeated the two navy ships on your own. She raised her eyebrows with her offer. She always knows just how to get on my nerves, he thought. After letting out a sigh, he raised a tattooed hand. Room. Ooh, <laughs> funny little room thing. Oh my god. <laughs> He said the line! <laughs> he said the thing! Oh my god! <laughs> a large glowing bubble engulfed the two. The silver-haired woman stood there in awe, as if her first time witnessing a devil fruit power. Ash was sadly broken out of her trance, hearing the sound of a sword swing by. What the? She looked around, not noticing anything had happened. What did you do? Look down. Her attention went down to the ground, then to her legs, then to her- Wait! My legs! <laughs> From the sheer force of her scream, her upper half fell to the floor. To her complete horror, her body lay there, pieces on the ground. What did you do? That's how I did it. Lost said with a devious smile. I'm just showing you, as you asked. Why you... Ash growled in scathing anger. Should have let the marines just take him. You better put me back together right now. <laughs> The captain chuckled at the sight of the girl in pieces on the floor, screaming at him. This never gets old. He thought, having gotten his amusement for the day, he flicked his hand around in motions to move the pieces of her body back together in his dimensional room. Ash patted herself down of dust and took uh, some deep breaths to calm herself. Don't ever do that again. Your turn. Lost smugly crossed her arms and leaned against the wall. This I gotta see. Gonna pay for that stunt. I thought I'd see the captain with a serious look on her face. I'm gonna beat the shit out of this man right now. <laughs> I'm about to end this man's whole that. career. Yeah. <laughs> Law's heart skipped a beat when she got closer than he was anticipating. Their faces were inches apart. As she wore no emotion on her face, then Crane's fist 
Wall coughed at an abrupt forceps, punctured through the side like a bullet. Fingers dug into his nerves, making his whole right side of his body go numb. The heart pirates gasped, seeing their captain fall down to his knee. I didn't like that, she grinned. Damn it, he groaned, clutching a bruise from her attack. I gotta admit, it was quite the punch. Thank you, she snickered, then knelt down, offering the captain a hand. It's called Dimaki. I target up those nerve points in their body to, dis uh, to disable them. Put it into your medical term. Something I picked up on my adventures. Ah, interesting. Law went standing up with Ash's help. He balanced on one foot as the other was still of no use. So, when can I walk again? In about two hours. Two hours! <laughs> Law started <laughs> making Ash laugh at him losing his school. Yep, that's revenge for cutting me up. He began walking him as his still as his still deeper into the ship, leaving the rest of the crew and I in confusion. Law could only growl in anger at the woman. And that is just enough time for you to take a nap. You need sleep. Ash <laughs> added on with his victorious smile. You're the patient here, not me! He yelled with comically pointed teeth. As the couple walked off, Lukaku and Uni whispered amongst themselves. Uh, they just meant right. They, they act like... Like, uh... Long lost friends, Akaku chuckled. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. You could easily get away from her, I bet. You have a point. I loved it. <laughs> I love you, Kaku. She's so pretty. She's so oh my, cool. Oh wait, this is the chapter that I took this 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 image and made it my pro my my little uh, background on my phone for chapter seven. <gasps> This is the one? This is the this one? Is, this is the- this is the- <gasps> Yeah, before I got oh replaced with Vox. No! <laughs> you're kidding. It Please is. Tell me you're kidding. I, I- I will show you later. <laughs> I'm devastated. I mean, Sanji's still the- I gotta throw Vox. myself out the window. <laughs> <sighs> this is it. I just gotta- I mean, I mean, Sanji's the- I gotta throw the whole phoenix away. <gasps> No, I'm from scratch. Hey, it's it's better than me being like I replaced you with Mr. Puzzles and. <laughs> oh my god, it could only get worse. Hey, you know I might my, my Mr. Puzzles plushie just shipped by the way. <sighs> <laughs> anyway, how'd you feel about that? Not not about the not excited. the last screen. Very excited. Yep. <laughs> I'm excited to read more. Me too. I, I, I mean, this author is very trusted. I have sources, and the sources are just me with uh, with my name next to it. <laughs> different and a costume. Thumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different costumes. We got you in a, like, a, in a lab coat with, like, one of those, uh, like, swirly glasses with a nose and mustache. Yeah. And then we have another one with a cowboy hat and the cowboy <laughs> mustache. And then there is another one where, uh, yeah, you're wearing Hello Glitter. Yeah. Actually, it's it's just me with different voices. So I come over here and I'm like, "Oh, I think the Lawx Reader would be a is a great fan fiction." <laughs> and do stupid oh, little voices. <laughs> but the Sanji X Reader is quite delightful. Yeah, like <laughs> I really enjoyed the Zoro one. That one was really good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, it's it's time, Jolene. Are you ready? My god, it's time? It's time! It's time to wheel and spin okay. the wheel! <laughs> Wait, I'm- you know what I'm kinda hoping for? What? I wanna finish off the Usopp X Reader. <gasps> oh, we- alright. That is- that's what I'm thinking, and that's what I'm thinking, and we'll see what we get, we'll see what we get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Replace him. I didn't mean to, it's fine. <laughs> alright, you ready? I'm very ready. Oh? Oh my god! Oh? Yes! Oh, no. There is a god! <laughs> uh, you know? You what know, do you mean, uh, you know? Things happen. There is a things god. Happen. And that god loves there. TV men as much as I do. <laughs> How are you gonna sit there and be like, no? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Deal with it! I prayed, I prayed, I prayed for this. I what, that we would get the Vox thing? I prayed for for salvation, and this is what I get. This isn't salvation to you? At this, at this point, let me just... 
Damn. <laughs> anyway, I'm so excited for Vox. What a delightful <laughs> young man. <laughs> So cap. That is the most cap thing you've ever said in your entire life. That you're excited to read I'm, a Fox X Reader. I was being sarcastic. Uh huh. So. Uh. Oh god. No, but for you're not excited. It, it's it's a great opportunity for us. Oh to wait, just... let's just read your fic. <gasps> oh my god, we could. <laughs> you give it to. Oh my god, we. Yes. Actually, by the time we read again, th th another chapter will be out during the time. Look at that. Oh my god, promotion for, for my fan fiction. Oh, I thought you said promotion, like I'm getting promoted. I was like, oh my god. Uh, you know what? You've been promoted. I mean, you're reading a mod. What else do you want? Damn. You're actually- Hold I'm up. gonna have you as Let my me... boy's boy. <laughs> Huh? You're gonna be like, you're, there's a thing on there that says your boy, and then it's, and it says your boy's boy. I'm gonna have you right next to Cameron. <laughs> oh my god, yo! Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! I feel like this is an honor I cannot have. All right, cool. I guess we can just keep you as mod then. <laughs> Damn. You know, you know what? I'm cool with that. I'm cool all, with right, that. all right, all right. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess I guess I guess we're reading my own fan fiction next. <laughs> Uh, we don't have to. We could find something different. We'll see. I know. I know. Were we were we reading a Vox reader? Oh, that one hasn't updated yet to give us more content. Really? Yeah. There's like nothing. Don't worry. I haven't stayed in my library. There hasn't it hasn't received any updates. Wait. We were on six, and right now they're on nine. They're what? What the fuck? There's no way. <laughs> we'll look at this later. <laughs> Anyway, on screen somewhere is a, a playlist of all the other Wattpad book club readings that I've done with Jolene and then some past people. So if that interests you, check the playlist. There's like Ooh. some really cool ones. Wattpad. What is this? Spooky season? Yes. Ooh, it's a, I'm trying to do the, the fucking, <laughs> you know, Halloween and when is coming it's out? Christ July? It's Christmas in July. You <laughs> no. They have Halloween and the summer ween. Gosh, I love get you cultured. So much. <laughs> I love you so much, Jolene, but I holy shit. <laughs> and then, Look up summer ween. I know that's a thing. Alright, I will. I will. Actually, didn't Gravity Falls do an episode like that where they they had a Halloween episode in summer? <laughs> yeah. Look, look what and I And instead said. of pumpkins, they had watermelons that they would come <laughs> Anyway. I'm gonna watch cool. Jolene, do you have any final statements of uh, your experience not. today? Nothing. Nothing. Damn. All right. Is that bad? I, I, I thought you were about to be like, I want, I want to smother law or some shit. I don't know. I think <laughs> no. I'm not. I'm not that down bad. Damn. Oh, uh, me. Me either. I'm anyway, thank you guys for watching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, terrible. Yep. All right.